Hi, this is Akshit and I work as a developer relations engineer at Maxim AI. We excel at agent evaluation and observability. In this video, we will be showing you how to work with runs feature on Maxim platform for agent evaluation and comparison across various parameters. These parameters can be latency, cost, tokens consumed, or across various versions of the prompts. Maxim provides you pre-built library of evaluators like bias, correctness, clarity, conciseness, and a lot more. You can just import them to your workspace and start evaluating your agents across the evaluators. So let me first of all show you what kind of report you can expect at the end of this video, and then we will see how to get there. So first of all, log into the Maxim platform and click on the runs feature. As your run will be completed or initiated, it will be visible in this runs list. And once it is completed, you will be able to see a report like this. So we were building an HR agent and we wanted to evaluate that agent and compare its output on various system prompts, latency, cost, tokens consumed, and correctness in the output. So for that purpose, we ran this test and Maxim created an insightful report for our agent. To get to a report for your agent like this, you also must have a data set. So if I show you the data set that we are using, it's a small data set that we are calling it as HRIT RAG QA data set. So in this data set, we are providing two columns, input and the expected output from the agent. For example, for the input, what is the company's policy on remote work? We expect this output to be generated by our agent. Now for all of these inputs, our agent is going to generate a response that will be called the received output. By seeing the expected outputs and the received outputs side by side, we can compare them. We will be able to find the delta and also let evaluators evaluate the agent based on that delta. So as per your use case and the requirements, you should create your own data set for your agent. And your data set can have more number of rows also, as you can see in the HR Q&A eval set. This data set is much larger than the previous one. But you should know that if your data set is large, all of these inputs will be provided to the agent and the overall cost and the tokens consumed for that run might increase. Now, as you've got a good idea of what is required to run this test, and before we jump into the details of this test report and the outputs and the insights that we are getting from it, let's see how to get here. And then we will dive deeper into this report. So you can trigger a run from single prompts. You can trigger a run from the prompt chains, and you can also run it from the workflows. To keep it simple, let's try to trigger a run from the single prompts. So let's go to the single prompts. And as we have already seen in the previous videos, how to create single prompts, I'll be skipping that part in this video. So if you check out the HR IT RAG application, we have already created a system prompt, which is also consuming a context. And that data context is coming from a remote server. We have already seen it in the context video, how to import your context via file or via an API. If you're building an end-to-end -end autonomous agent, you might need to import prompt tools also. And how to work with prompt tools, we have already seen in a previous video. Then you can change the parameters. Let's say I want to keep the temperature as 0.9. And yes, I want to work with GPT-40. So model is also selected. So I'll save my session and click on this test button. I need to publish the version before uh, I run it because I made some changes. So I'll click on publish version. I'll call this as V20 and click on publish. Then I can click on test. And I want it to be a comparison run because I want to evaluate my agent on two different prompts. So one will be this one V20 and the second one I will be selecting from the same uh, prompt that is HRIT RAG, but I want to compare it with V4, which is using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And you can have any number of uh, prompts for comparison, but make sure that if you increase the number of prompts uh, for comparison, then your cost and the tokens consumed will also be increasing for your run. Now let's select the data set, HRIT RAG QA data set, and we need to select the context, so HRIT RAG context. And then you can enable your evaluators based on your requirements and your agent use case. So yes, I want my HR agent to be evaluated on bias because my HR agent should not be biased uh, for any gender or race or geography, right? And I want my HR agent to be consistent. So I'll be evaluating it on consistency. I want to evaluate my agent on faithfulness and context relevance also. Let's enable these uh, evaluators only. And uh, programmatic evaluators uh, are not required for this HR agent. And yes, let's have an uh, let's have human evaluator also. 
so that as a human also i can evaluate my agent manually so i'm going to switch on the bias check and now let's click on trigger test run for human evaluation you get two options either you can annotate on the report itself or you get second option send via email and this is helpful if you have some external collaborators for this agent so because i am currently an individual so let's click on annotate on report and let's click on add evaluators so as you can see, uh, I got switched to uh, the runs uh, feature. Currently, my report is getting generated. And for all of these seven inputs, uh, the status is currently running. As soon as it will be completed, the status will become completed. So basically, uh, in the backend, what is happening is uh, our agent will be provided this user input and uh, expected output will be generated. As you can see, it is getting generated. And for that expected output and the generated output, the evaluators are going to evaluate the outputs. And for that inference, latency will be calculated and the tokens consumed will be calculated. And based on that, the cost is getting calculated. And as soon as it is completed, I can see a very insightful report. First of all, I can see the outputs from my evaluators. Uh, my agent passed the bias check. That means my agent is not biased for any gender or geography or race. That is good. Consistency, all the outputs that my agent uh, generated are consistent and my agent has passed the consistency evaluator check. Context relevance, so that has failed and the score mean score is 0.31 upon 1, which is kind of low and that means the context that my agent received is not relevant. And be because of that, the context relevance evaluator test has failed. Faithfulness, my agent, HR agent is faithful and the mean score is 0.99 by 1, which is uh, really great. And bias check is currently empty because this is a human eval check and I have to do that check manually. And I'll be showing you how to do that. Now, because this was a comparison run, I can compare the two prompt versions on the basis of the cost that they consumed, then the tokens that they consumed. The purple one is HRIT RAG application v4 version that I selected and the pink one is v20 version that I selected. So I can clearly see that the V4 that is Claude Sonnet 3.5 is consuming more cost uh, than, than the GPT-401. Okay. And the tokens also are more for V4 than V20. Latency is also more for uh, Claude 1 and latency is very less for uh, GPT-401. So I can clearly see that the prompt version V20 is performing much better and cost efficient for me, uh, for my agent use case. Great. Now let's see this uh, table. So over here, what is happening? Uh, now you can see the status are all completed. This was the input and this was the expected output. Now you can see both the prompt are over here and this is the re retrieved context based on the system prompt, right? And this is the output that got generated uh, during this inference for both of the prompt versions. Now you can uh, read them because this is because we also need to evaluate them manually because we enabled the human eval check. So you are going to read both of the responses and based on that, you are going to annotate this report. You can see the latency for both of them. So I can clearly see that the latency for V4 version is approximately 3.5 times or three times of the latency for V20 version. Context relevance. Uh, kind of has failed for all of the inputs. So we need to work on the context relevance via changing some parameters or changing the system prompts. For the human eval, you can either add a comment or you can also suggest a new output that you feel should have been generated by the agent. And you can add a rating. You can also switch between the views. Let's say you only want to see the inputs and the outputs or the report just for the V4. Then you can click on this button and you will not be seeing any output and inferences from V20. You can also create a search across your data set. Let's say your data set is very big. Let's say a hundred inputs, right? And you are looking for a particular row. Then you can actually click on the search and you can search across your data set. Let's say over here I search for dress and I can see the two inputs that contain this keyword. Now let's say I feel that one more evaluator should have been a part of this run. Now I don't have to rerun it. I can click on this add evaluators and let's say clarity is the evaluator that I want to add to this report. Then I can just enable it and click on add evaluators. Automatically the scores will be calculated based on this input. And you can see that most of the inferences are failing this evaluator. So it's good that I did this. Next is toggle columns. 
let's say I don't want to do the human eval and I want to hide it from the report. Then, then I can click on this toggle columns and I can uncheck this bias check. Then it will not be visible in my report. And here we get the filter option. Let's say you only want to see the uh, rows that have the status completed. So select status is equal to completed. Currently all the rows have status completed. So that's why I'm not able to view that. So that's why I'm not able to view any change. But let's say I want to see only those rows which have clarity more than 0.75. So I'll click on status. I can select clarity greater than 0.75. Apply. So only one row is there which satisfies this filter. Now you are seeing that I am adding these evaluators and this has been possible because of the Maxims evaluators library. So if you go to the evaluators and click on browse evaluator store, then you will be able to see that Maxim has provided this evaluators library and you just need to import these evaluators to your workflow. We have AI based evaluators, programmatic evaluators, statistical evaluators, API based and human evaluators. Feel free to explore this section more, but we are going to have a detailed video on this section very soon. Now let's say you want to rerun this uh, test. So you don't have to go back to the prompts and do the same stuff again. You can click on rerun and it is going to rerun the complete report again. My report is again ready. Some of the evaluators are still evaluating the responses. And let's say now uh, I have to share this report with some external collaborators or with my manager. Then I can click on this share report and a link is copied. You can go to this link and whomsoever you share this report with, they will be able to view this report. Next is if we go deeper into one of the inference. So if I click on this row, then you can see the overview of this test run. Input, expected output, the retrieved context, output and the tokens. So total tokens, input tokens and completion tokens. Cost also you can see for input and the completion cost. Then you can click on this messages. You can see the system prompt with the context added. Then you can see the messages uh, from user and the agent. You can also click on this open in playground so that if you want to work more with this prompt, you don't have to copy and uh, paste it there and again create an environment. You can just click on this open in playground and automatically that prompt with that context will be created as a single prompt over here. So overall, this feature of test runs is very significant if you are building an agent for the production use case. And before jumping out of the production, you want to evaluate your agent and you want to make some estimates for tokens, cost, latency, and you want to come up with the final prompt that you should go ahead with. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will be using this agent evaluation and runs feature for your agents. We will be excited to see what you build. So till the next video, enjoy your AI journey. You can get started with Maxim from the link in the description or you can also check out evals.new to quickly get started.